inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to Not Your Mother's Hobbies. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the next set of Hero Quest items, the miscellaneous items. Here we have the throne. Uh, there's quite a few of these little miscellaneous things. Uh, a weapon rack here. And we're going to tackle all of them in today's video. Here are some treasure chests. There's three of them. We're going to do a couple of them different, a couple of the same. Uh, and then here is the, the tomb. You notice that I did put some little details inside, like scatter and skulls. And here's the torture rack. So they're all pli primed black. And we're going to do our usual dry brush zenithal. And in case you haven't seen how to do that yet, I'll put a bloop in the corner for you to check it out. All right, let's get started. So something easy to start with, we're going to be doing the treasure chests. Uh, we're going to use our usual wood color, snake bite leather, and just paint all that wood with that brown. Super easy to do, just like the tables, starting off real simple. If you're having any trouble with this step, just try painting with the grain, as that'll help keep all your paint strokes kind of more consistent. All right, here we're going to be doing our usual metal blocking, and we're going to be doing a silver metal. So this is basilicanum gray, and that'll be our base coat to block in all the metal parts. That'll be the trim, the little handle, and the big spooky lock on the front. Now also, we're gonna do a gold chest, and I like to do my gold blocking with Gullman Flesh. So we're gonna do the exact same thing with all the trim, the spooky lock, the little handles. We're gonna use Gullman Flesh to block in all those golds. Okay, with all that metal blocked in, we're going to be switching to gun metal and we're just going to stipple over, brush over, you don't have to be too clean, just kind of hit all the top areas and stay out of the shadows. You'll have a nice rough metal look. You can see here I'm even scraping the side of my brush uh, across those details, almost like a wet dry brush. All right, and we're gonna do the exact same thing with our Retributor armor for the golds. And there you go, all the treasure chests are done. I'm going for a rougher treasure chest, so I'm not doing any sort of highlights or pings. But if you want to, you can definitely use my other metal recipes from previous videos to take it up another notch. Okay, the throne. Starting off real simple. All that wood, snake bite leather. There's lots of little ornate details all over this thing, in the trim and on the back and the top. We're just gonna pick all those out with the contrast. It's gonna seep in, and really make those details stand out. Very little effort. All right, we're gonna start doing those cushions. We're gonna use Blood Angels Red, another contrast paint. We're gonna use that on the cushions, make a nice red velour velvety kind of 
kind of look to it. Here on the front cushion, just keep your brush going uh, in, in a, a one direction. You can see I'm pulling it across, I'm pulling it across, pulling it across, and that'll help you keep a nice, consistent, smooth look on that cushion. And with all that done, we're gonna go in with our Retributor armor. And just like in the previous video with those big book stands and stuff, we're gonna just lightly go in and, and pick out all those little details with the gold. If you need to, you can even scrape your brush across uh, like the side of the brush and drag it across and that can help you uh, pick out those details while not getting smudgy and smooshy and paint everywhere you don't need. If you have good brush control, get in there, get precise, pick them all out. With all those decals and stuff done, we got one last thing and it's dotting in all the little gold buttons. Take your time, deep breaths, steady hand, do your best and you'll thank yourself for the effort. All right, there we go, that's the chair done. Pretty simple, pretty quick. thought it couldn't get any easier. <laughs> well, this is going to prove you wrong. Uh, we're just going to use Seraphim Sepia and go all over, drench this sucker. Now you don't have to use Seraphim Sepia. You don't even have to use uh, a sepia tone ink or wash. Uh, just use any kind you want, put it on there. It's going to change whatever colors you're putting on top of it, even if it's the, the same highlights. That undercoat is going to really enhance and change it however you're wanting. Um, me, I wanted a warm kind of granite. I thought it would look a, a little different than the usual cold gray stone. Don't forget we're also doing the insides of this and we can use that same sepia wash to do the skull. That is if you have a skull. <laughs> okay, so when that's all dry, we're gonna go in with a dry brush. Dry and dry. We're gonna be using Tyrant Skull. This is a Citadel dry brush paint. Uh, it's kind of more congealed. It'll give us a nice warm, yellowy kind of look. We're just gonna go in there and, and go all over it, big heavy dry brush all over the place. Uh, and you'll, you'll keep that warm tone. And when that's all done, we're gonna go in with Wraith Bone for another kind of targeted highlight on the tippy tippy tops. Uh, just to make it really extra highlighted um, and, and you'll feel the light kind of coming from the top down, top down, top down. Really make those edges pop. There's tons of little detail in there. We wanna, we wanna have it stand out. If we switch to a different brush, we can also use this Wraith Bone to highlight up that skull. And even those little stones in there too, if you add them in. Get all that rubble, make it pop. Okay, we're gonna add some, some wear, some weather. Uh, I wanted to put some moss on here. So I took Auric Flesh and I just stippled it on, dry brushed it on, uh, jabbed it, stabbed it and into all the little um, crooks. Uh, unevenly, you don't have to be even, but where you're putting it, you might wanna build it up a bit in some areas, in the corners, right? Where the moisture might collect um, around the lip, uh, that overlap and stuff. Just experiment and have fun. Next up we have the torture rack. Here it is all dry brushed up. You can see I put a little extra skull there for some extra detail. We had a skeleton arm already there. Why not tap some more? So snake bite leather, our tried and true wood. Get up in there, get all those wood parts of the rack. There's a lot going on. So really pay attention to what parts uh, are wood, what parts are metal on that little spinny cog thing. Here's an idea of what that's going to look like. But there's a lot in there. The dry brush should help you. 
We're going to use Nuln Oil. Uh, this is a Citadel shade. And we're going to use this to change the top slab to a different kind of stone than the bottom kind of cobbles. We're going to keep the bottom cobbles untouched. Um, it's, it's just going to look like that pale, pale white gray. Um, but on top, we want to differentiate that. We're going to make it look like a darker kind of granity hard rock. And we're going to use Nuln Oil to do that. So all the way around. Basilicanum gray. Here's where we start doing our metallic blocking. Blocking in all those metals. So we're going to use this for all of the steel parts, iron parts. That'll be the chains, uh, the parts around the cog wheel, uh, the iron band around the stone slab, uh, the chains uh, uh, around the little skeleton hand, and those little feet clamps. Here's what it's going to look like. Okay, next up we're using Agrax Earthshade. This is going to be for all of the cloth parts. Give it a sort of dingy, dirty cloth look. It's rotted. Uh, and that's how we're going to get that. Slap that all over. And here we go, Skeleton Horde. That's going to go onto all the bone parts. And you can already see that Skeleton Horde to Agrax. That's already changing. Even though they're both little brown, pale colors, they're going to look very different. We're going to highlight them the same. You'll see what's going to happen. Militarm Green. We're doing a different Moss approach here. Uh, and just dab it around uh, that cobble. Make sure to put it where you think the moisture would be. So like underneath that iron band that's separating the bottom slab from the top slab. You can do drips. You can do big patches of growth at the bottom where it's going to touch um, like the ground and the, and the, the dirty floor. <laughs> so here you can see I'm doing some streaks, some grimy streaks. Just have fun and experiment. So that's, that's two different ways we can do moss. Both of them are just really fun and loose. Try them out yourself. Here we're even doing a little stippling with that. All right, gunmetal going in for the finishing touches on that metal. We're gonna start gunmetal up here. Remember, with that blocking, we can afford to be a little loose and not hit all the detail. It's gonna look dingy, it's gonna look rough, it's gonna look corroded and old. So you can see how I'm, I'm kind of not painting all of it and I'm leaving uh, some of that basilicanum gray showing, right? So the band on the outside, those foot clamps, and then all the chain and banding on that torture rack wheel. Wraith bone in here, highlighting all of our skeleton bone. Business as usual here. We're also gonna use that wraith bone on these filthy dingy sheets, this cloth. And you see how just having a different undertone is going to change what your mid-tone or your, your paint that you're putting on top is going to look like? Just a simple technique that can really change what you have if you don't have a lot of paints. Just change what you're putting underneath. Black Templar, we're going to use this to do some touch-ups on the skull. So when I was doing my highlighting, I got a little sloppy. I'm just using Black Templar. You can use any black and just get in there and, and fix it. Easy as that. You can make mistakes. Okay, our final piece of terrain, the weapon rack. Snake bite leather on that wood. There's a lot of wood here. Get in with that snake bite leather. Put it all over the place. What else is there a lot of? There's a lot of metal. Get in there with that basilicanum gray. We're doing our metal blocking. This is the first step. The silicanum gray for all those iron and steel parts. So when you're done all the steel blocking, it should look like that. Don't forget about the banding on the shields. And here we go, we got some wild wood for one of the shafts or the handles. This is the spear shaft. This is a darker brown. Uh, you can use any dark brown. These are just what I'm using. Talisar blue for that um, the hero shield. I guess the good guy's shield. We're going to use this Talisar blue to really make it pop. Make it look really heroic. 
Now try to be careful, try to keep a steady hand. You don't have to. We're gonna to do touch-ups later. Remember, it's always okay to make mistakes, but the fewer the mistakes, the less you have to clean up. So just do your best. Okay, so we're gonna start doing the handles for all these weapons. We're gonna use a bunch of different colors. You can just use one color if you want, but I'm using a bunch and we're starting off with Volopus Pink. I like this pink color. It's what I use on my Stormcast Eternals. Uh, <laughs> I think it's really cool. I put it on all sorts of weapons. It's real fun. Blood Angel's red for this one. If you have other colors you wanna do, feel free to do those. Um, just experiment, right? Do what looks good to you. We got Gorgrunt of Fur here for the shaft of this axe. Uh, it's just another way to make like a wood. It's, it's kind of an orangey brown. It's gonna look like a lighter wood. Another handle, another color. This time we're using Skeleton Horde. Golden Flesh, finally we're doing something different. We're doing the metallic gold blocking. Now we're doing the bad guy's shield on the right hand side. We're using Black Templar to just fill that in. This has a lot of tiny little line work detail. So again, take your time if you need to. Deep breaths, stay calm. Mistakes can always be fixed. Retributor armor for our gold. This is the first metal we're putting on this. And we're gonna layer it up on all those Gulliman flesh parts. We got gunmetal, tried and true. We're gonna put that down as our base for all of our iron and steel metal parts. And don't forget those rims of the shields. Now these ones we are gonna go in with a little highlight extra ping of chrome. That can go on your gold, that can go on all of your uh, iron steel parts. No matter what, we're highlighting them up. These are not old weapons, at least not mine. They're ready for use, they're oiled and well kept care of. Okay, now these touch-ups on the shields. I'm just using that regular old white bottle craft paint. Nothing special there. Just go in and tidy up. And because this detail on the shields really pops out, it should be really simple, or at least a lot simpler than doing the, the blue and the black underneath because it's so raised up. Uh, that should really help you out. All right, there we go. Let's see what we've done. Torture rack, treasure chests, throne, weapon rack, and tomb. So here's our iron and steel banded treasure chest. Check that out. Looks really worn and greasy. Here we go, our gold one. It's kind of rosy gold, right? It's not that bright, yellowy, shiny. It's got more of a well-worn look. All right, here's that weapon rack that we finished. Look at all the different variation in there, right? Like everything has its own kind of look. Even though they're all there, they all look like they belong, but they all look a little different. That torture rack looking proper grimy. Really like how the uh, moss turned out on this one. I think that's how I'll do moss uh, going forward on, on other projects. I really like how it looks, the streaky grimy look. That throne looking regal, looking fresh. We didn't even have to add chrome pings, but hey, if you wanted to, that can make this look extra noble, extra royal. And lastly, that tomb, looking all rowdy and gross. It's got that other kind of moss look to it. 
the stippled on brighter one. And there we go on the inside, we got some rubble, some skulls. There you have it, that's the end. That's the last of the Hero Quest furniture and items. Uh, let me know how you did on yours. Did you paint yours? How's your Hero Quest journey going? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you haven't, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think with a thumbs up. Click that bell notification if you want to see when the next video is coming out. Uh, with all these furniture items done, next up we're diving right into miniatures. So hope to see you then. And uh, that's it. Bye bye!